I mean, I think Monero is a freaking awesome technology. I think privacy is really important for freedom and just like, you know, like I think Edward Snowden says, if people don't have privacy, they change their behavior. So even the fact of not having privacy creates less freedom. So uh, something to that effect, you know, so then it's like, well, if we want to have, you know, a separation of money and state, then, you know, I think basically adoption is the way to create that. So, you know, if, if you know, in every major city in America, there was coffee shops and pizza places that, you know, you could, yeah, you could pay with your credit card if you want to through the, the banking system, or yeah, we accept Monero, you know, and like, and again, at the point of sales and wallets became intuitive enough and, you know, easy enough to use where it was, you know, frictionless, so to speak, you know, that could create that separation of money and state. Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet, a trustless open source wallet that gives you the keys to your crypto. Invoice, donate, and trade your Monero with peace of mind, piece of cake. And by Stealthy X, an instant exchange where privacy is a top concern. Go to StealthyX.io to instantly exchange between Monero and 450 plus assets without having to create an account or register and with no limits. Making StealthyX a simple way to purchase Monero with crypto anonymously. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever by typing in monerotalk.crypto in your monero.com or cake wallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Michael Ten, an artist and author having written several books about longevity, such as Radical Life Extension, Physiological, Metaphysical, and Political Implications. Michael is also interested in crypto and financial freedom and how it can help in several areas of life. The two discuss privacy in crypto and how far Michael thinks it should go, the mental health industry, the importance of separation of psychiatry and state, longevity escape velocity, Monero user experience improving, how Bitcoin Cash has onboarded merchants, how Monero can follow its footsteps, Monero multisig and smart contracts, and much more. Monero Talk starts now. All right, Michael, how's it going, man? Good, thank you. How are you? Good, good, good. Um, I'm, I was frantically trying to learn about you before we jumped on, to, to be honest. Uh, you know, I've, I've met you on Twitter indirectly a few times, seen you, seen you out there tweeting things. Obviously, you've crossed over into the Monero ecosystem a little bit, and that's where I, that's where I noticed you. So we're, so we're in the same bubble with that regard. And I saw you making commentary on some of my comments. Uh, you threw out a book, uh, a book name, a title. Um, I believe it was, the author was Thomas. Yeah, was the book Faith and Freedom? Was that the one? Yes. The one? Oh, uh, yeah, Faith, Faith and Freedom. Yes. Faith and Freedom, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you, so you threw that out there. I did a quick chat GPT to, to look it up, see what it is. Oh, it's an interesting topic. Um, and, and then I saw that you have, uh, you have a YouTube channel, so you're, and it's been going on for like over 10 years, right? It looks like, yeah, I think I just topped 50,000 views. So. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Uh, I know. So yeah. you're, you're, you're like, uh, you know, my understanding libertarian values, but we'll get into that. Um, so without further ado, I'll let you properly introduce yourself, but that's, that's what I know of you right now. And then uh, I know you're into like longevity, some other, some other things and just general yeah. libertarian uh, uh, thinking. And so I want to yeah. explore your mind and get your viewpoints, obviously with regards to Monero, but I'm sure with other mm -hmm. things, but go ahead and, and give us the intro. Yeah. So yeah. And there are crypto individuals into longevity stuff, which we, I can go into later, but yeah. So Michael 10, uh, I write books, make music. I'm into a lot of different things. Um, and then crypto I've been into since probably, I mean, back in like 2013, 2014, you know, I, I knew about Bitcoin. I was like, you know, uh, blockchain seems like future should have invested then or, you know, invested, bought, whatever. But, you know, 2016, 2017 started getting like, you know, learning about it, like, you know, uh, moving crypto around a little bit here and there, just like understanding, you know, uh, addresses and yada, yada. Bitcoin cash, I think I was really into from the beginning. Same thing with Monero. Um, at first, Litecoin was sort of interest, but then I sort of realized how 
much bit, like Bitcoin Core that was, and then mo mostly gravitated towards Bitcoin Cash and Monero. Three or four years ago, Monero transaction fees were, I don't know, 50 or 60 cents a transaction. I still thought it was a really interesting technology because I think privacy is a very valuable thing if we want to live in like a free society and uh, so on and so forth. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and been into life extension too. I mean, stuff I write about, uh, uh, I have a background in psychology, you know, I used to work as a counselor and I've written books about uh, aspects of psychology and psychiatry. And um, and I, I can tie that into crypto. And then also, yeah, the life extension stuff, I like Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum or co-creator, whatever you want to say, he has donated like $3 million worth of Ethereum or more to the SENS Research Foundation, which is trying to, you know, extend the healthy human lifespan and so on and so forth. So in the music sort of that I make is like uh, eclectic. So and I could say more, maybe call that good. So no, I, it's a pretty good general intro. Um, so, so your first, so your rabbit, the, your, your journey down the crypto rabbit hole, it began with, with Bitcoin and then like to Bitcoin cash and then to Monero. Is that kind of the, uh, trajectory? Yeah. You know, I'd go on coin market cap and just look at the top 10 or 20 in market okay. capitalization and see how they'd move around. And, you know, I, I would like just sort of research each one, like, um, you know, some of the more obscure ones were of interest for a time, like vert coin, I thought was interesting because, because. Okay. You know, like I got into that for a little while, but then I, I, you know, some of them are like fads, you know, they get more popular. Dogecoin goes way up because, you know, Elon Musk tweets about it or something. And then, you know, like one just is sort of interesting, I think, to see like the top 100 by market cap and then sort of try to see like, why are out of the, there's like what, four or 5,000 cryptocurrencies now. It's like, why are these 100, the 100? And then why are these top 20 or top 30, the top 20 or 30, and then top 10, and then, you know, top two or three. And sort of trying to understand, I mean, I guess crypto economics would be, you know, the, the buzzword for that. But I mean, there's, I think that's a valid yeah. idea. What, what do you see as being the primary use cases for crypto? What's your. Uh, so ultimately, um, I mean, it, it's, you know, as the Bitcoin white paper says in the title, peer to peer electronic cash. So again, if the transaction fees are $4 or $10, can it really function as peer to peer electronic cash? So, I mean, overall, I mean, if you look on earth, there's what, 8 billion humans now. So of course there's people who, you know, the average per capita income in the United States is, I don't know, 60 to 80,000 or something at this point, I have no idea. And then, you know, there's like developing nations where, you know, people live on one or two or $3 a day. So, I mean, in that sense, I have thought for a while, uh, you know, basically it can be a way to increase freedom and pull people out of poverty. This book actually affected me a whole lot. It's by, it's called the end of poverty, economic possibilities of our time. And that actually is part of what sort of got me into the life extension stuff mm. for a couple of reasons. But I mean, I see cryptocurrency as a way to, you know, we have fiat money, you know, there used to be the gold standard and then, you know, money used to be made of silver. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, you know, banking the unbanked, you know, Sal the Agorist, I think was on one of your shows talking about how, you know, Bitcoin cash is ready now, you know, even though it's pseudonymous, you know, it's private until somebody knows what your address is, then they can see everything connected to that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, banking the unbanked, you know, banking, being able to put assets, you know, somewhere where they can be moved around. You know, if you, if you have a Bitcoin cash wallet or a Monero wallet and go from country to country, if you can use that then, you know, that, that helps people to, uh, you know, like ethical capitalism, there's ruthless capitalism and ethical capitalism. I mean, I, I just see crypto as a tool, you know, to, as a vehicle to move value from people, from businesses, B2B, B2C, so on and so forth. So, do you, how far do you go with that? Like philosophically in terms of your beliefs, do you think people have, should have like the the freedom to transact completely freely using a technology like Monero, or do you, do you think there should be some? So decentral, you know, DAOs, uh, decentralized autonomous organizations. Um, I see, you know, like with if you look at the S and P five hundred in stocks, and if you know if we want to, you know, then like the citizens, you know, I hope I'm not going too tangential here. I'll try to tie it together. But like as far as uh, you know, um, dividends. If we want to have organizations creating value you know, then, uh, I think it's important to have that freedom in the sense of like, if, 
I wanted to have a, a DAO or a business and, you know, issue stock and then pay people dividends in Bitcoin Cash or Monero, like that becomes a very complex process because like the SEC, like I've written articles like are, you know, SEC laws unconstitutional, you know, they're meant to protect investors, but it reduces freedom. So, uh, how about the how about the Bank Secrecy Act? What's your take on that? And like KYC AML, the fact that you know uh, preventing money laundering and the financing of terrorism and government yeah. you know, like you know all all bets are off. All you know, forget any rights you you thought you had for these purposes. We need to be able to do these things no matter no matter what. So like I'm not an anarchist per se, you know. So I see value in. Uh, I'm I'm gonna sort of I I may have personal views on that I'm gonna remain a little bit neutral and maybe not like, uh, but as far as AML KYC, um, you know Monero being private I think has a tremendous amount of value. So of course if something's private, shady actors could use it and do whatever. So you know if if the powers that be get Monero removed from all centralized exchanges. Um, you know, like Monerica exists and there's, you know, legit products on Monerica and, you know, as a libertarian, like sort of, you know, uh, I I've described myself as a social Democrat, a fi uh, civil libertarian and a fiscal Republican. I mean, I, I sort of joke when I say that a little bit, cause it's like, you know, but I mean, I, I, for, I was a registered independent for a while and, um, I think I'm a registered Democrat now just cause I wanted to vote for like, you know, in the primaries, uh, yada, yada. So, um, so you, you're yeah you're not you're not an anarchist you're not really an agorist yeah, obviously to, to some uh, well I, you know a bit of free markets right and uh... yeah like so for example uh, conscripted mil cons 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 what's that word conscription so conscripted militaries is obviously against agorism I would say you know so like oh so uh, the, there's a book by that author I've referenced you know Thomas Saws. He wrote a book called All Right to Drug is a Case for a Free Market. So, I mean, yeah, I think all drugs should be legal. So if you have Monero, and again, I've never done PCP or cocaine or crack or any of that, but if somebody wants to go buy fentanyl or PCP or cocaine or crack with Monero, I mean, in theory, I think that should be legal, you know? And then, of course, I don't like I don't think shooting up drugs in parks in front of families should be legal. Like, I mean, just like other intimate acts, it's like, okay, do that in your house, you right. know, not in front of kids. As long as you're not like, harming other people, right? It's a yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm I consider myself libertarian in that respect. You know, there's jokes about libertarians. It's like one libertarian. There's like you know ten libertarians in the room. And they're all pointing at each other and saying, "You're not a real libertarian." I mean, you've, you've heard memes or jokes like that, you know. So, I mean, um, I mean, so an agorism in certain. So like for example, that book, Faith and Freedom. So it's like I think suicide should be a human right. So I mean, in one sense, living on this earth should be a choice. So if somebody's a true agorist. They should, you know, that guy, Thomas Sodge wrote books like Suicide Prohibition, The Shame of Medicine, and Fatal Freedom, The Ethics and Politics of Suicide. So, again, I don't promote suicide. I hope we can make Earth such an awesome place. Nobody wants to engage in suicide. But a true agorist, I think, should really, you know, uh, be on that Sazian view that living on Earth should be a voluntary choice, you know. So, um, but again, I hope we can make living on Earth so awesome. Everybody wants to stay here. And I think crypto can actually be a way to do that. You know, that's, I think that's a vehicle for that. Is, is Sazian, how do you pronounce it? Sazian? Well, it's so like, you know, uh, Sigmund Freud, you know, yeah. so there, you could say Freudian. So a way of thinking. So like Saz, yeah, ha, Saz. you know, I would say Sazian logic or Saz, right. Sazian ethics. So it's influenced by Saz, but his name is Thomas Saz. And yeah, he wrote a Does he, does he have to, like, what, what group of thinkers does he belong to? Oh, he's, he's definitely a libertarian. I mean, he, so he's a psychiatrist. He was a psychiatrist, professor emeritus at the uh, up, what, um, State University of New York Medical Center. So he was born in 1920. He wrote the book called The Myth of Mental Illness in 1960, his first big book. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, he wrote other books like The Manufacture of Madness, a comparative study between the Inquisition and the mental health movement. He wrote articles comparing... Uh, you know, uh, mental illness as psychiatry's phlogiston. So not to get too much off topic, but phlogiston was a precursor to the theory of oxidation. So, you know, when fire burns or metal rust, it oxidizes. Before people knew what that was, they called it 
phlogiston, like there's phlogiston theory. So basically he says, when you, you, you know, if you mention, oh, that person is mentally ill or there's mental illness or, you know, or there's mental health, like that's a metaphor. Cause like the mind can't be ill or sick. The body can't. And that actually goes back to cryptocurrencies in the sense of fiat or money. You know, there's fiat money versus the gold standard. So you can say there's the gold standard of medicine, which is, you know, objective measurable pathology that can be measured on image, you know, images, blood tests versus just psychiatry is all, you know, uh, self for, you know, interviewing people and observing behavior. So, you know, there's fiat money, fiat <laughs> medicine, and then there's, you know, you could say there's a separation of church and state, which we supposedly have. And then there's a separation of money and state, which cryptocurrency can enable. And then the separation of psychiatry and state. So, I think an agorist or libertarian, at least in my view, should probably support all those. Okay. So, explain more of that last point. What would what would be the separation of uh, psychology and state? Yeah. Well, so, I mean, basically, like Thomas saw. So, uh, a little bit of history. So, in the the DSM, which is what the the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, is what you know they call it the psychiatric bible. I mean, that's it's like popularly called that. So. You know, like one book by Thomas Saws is called The Theology of Medicine. And, um, but uh, as far, so he he calls like psychiatry a pseudo-medical cult. Um, I mean, which I tend to agree with. Uh, you know, again, but I think all drugs should be legal. Some Somebody wants to take an antidepressant or an antipsychotic or a mood stabilizer, like they should be able to. Like, um, but yeah, as far as the separation of psychiatry and state. So yeah, Benjamin Rush, who was in the picture of this. So the current version is the DSM-5, and I think they took his picture out of it. But for the last before, that was released, I don't know, four or five years ago. And then, you know, for the previous five or 10 or 15 years, in the front of the DSM-4 TR, text revised, they had a picture of Benjamin Rush, who was considered the father of psychiatry. And he was, one, a signer of the Declaration of Independence, uh, two, um, a uh, the Surgeon General of the Continental Army in the Revolutionary War, oh, wow. and um, like I mean, he had all sorts of theories. Like some people, I think, I mean, you can look it up on Wikipedia. Like I think one of his theories was that black people have some form of leprosy, and um, you know, I mean, now it'd be probably be considered very racist or just and you know, also just very wrong. Um, you know, uh, I mean, I could talk about psychiatry as, as much or as little as we want to, but you know, I think the history is very interesting and like. You know, I, I get accused of being, uh, well, I'll just say, I, like, I, I, I mean, I, I agree with most of what Tom, Tom Tom Cruise has said about psychiatry, but I'm I'm not in that spiritual persuasion, if you hear what I'm saying, like, you know, so, but uh, yeah, what does he have to say? So, well, actually, Thomas Saws co-founded uh, an organization called Citizens Commission on Human Rights with uh, the Church of Scientology. You know, I mean, there's an interview of Tom Cruise with Matt Lauer talking about psychiatry, and Tom Cruise to Matt Lauer, he's like, "You're daft." You're daft. And, uh, you know, like there's, I don't want to get, well, like there's a, 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 an article by a psychologist, Bonnie Burstow from Canada is called child psychiatric drugging as a form of child abuse, not a radical proposition. So, you know, in like, but so actually this, this so again, to get a little off topic from crypto. So like there's been the whole COVID vaccine stuff for the last like three or four years. And people have been like my body, my choice, same thing with like you know, women, you know, people in abortion, my body, my choice, vaccines, my body, my choice. Well, guess what? Like, what about people in psychiatry, my body, my choice? It's like people started all of a sudden, psych coercive psychiatry has been around for 40, 50, 80 more years. And then only when it affects them with vaccines do people start caring about medical freedom. <laughs> I find a little bit, I mean, you know, uh, anyway, uh, that's, I, yeah. I, uh, I don't want to get too much stuff on attention from crypto, but separation of money and state. I mean, I think, you know, I don't think that can be forced. I don't think that should be forced, but I mean, I, th I think cryptocurrency can, can enable that. And I, I think the state, you know, the, the federal banks and intelligence agencies, whatever, are going to resist that as much as they can. But I mean, you've probably seen memes about Monero. It's like, you know, like a, a tidal wave or, you know, it's like, you know, I mean, in one sense, crypto can't be stopped because, you know, people can have a, uh, a ham radio and, and, you know, send out cryptocurrency transactions. So if I'm not mistaken, so. Yeah. I mean, uh, what, one of the reasons I think we, we need Monero is because we need a way to preserve our Liberty mm -hmm. digital aid, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And if, if you're, and if you're talking about, a an ultimate outcome where most people can effectively live forever, 
it's going to be vital that we have the ability to secure our liberty in digital form. Otherwise, we'll be living in hell. Well, absolutely. Like, uh, you know, the whole like make Orwell fiction again. Maybe you've heard that, you know, maybe you heard that sort of play on make, uh, MAGA, whatever, make, make Orwell fiction again. You know, CBDCs I see is a huge problem. I mean, in one sense, it's, oh, it's super convenient. Digital, digital money from, you know, our bank accounts, from the government, COVID relief stimulus payments, like, Oh, it seems like super great. But then you look at all the, like what they do in China with CBDCs, like get your face scanned. Oh, you did some, said something against the regime. Uh, now, yeah, you can't, you know, you can't leave your house or you can't, you know, uh, buy an Uber or whatever. You know, like Uber could all be like cryptocurrencies, you know, with DAOs. I mean, they've talked about with smart contracts, you know, basically having a decentralized Uber, decentralized Airbnb. You know, there's interplanetary file system and Filecoin. Um you know, same thing with like all these, I mean, you said you're using chat GPT, you look at that book, Faith and Freedom. So, I mean, the stuff that large language models and AI are going to enable, and, and by the way, I was skeptical of AI and artificial intelligence back in like 2017, 2018, you know, people are saying, oh yeah, AI is going to change everything, be, be, you know, could be a big problem. And like when chat GPT came out about a year ago, like I was actually, uh, like, it seemed like a way better, like, I did not realize that this was where the technology is at. And um, I mean, I, I don't know if you've had ChatGPT generate code for you. You know, I've, I've had it like, you know, help me write apps, you know, and um, I mean, as far as like, you know, all the source code on GitHub related to different cryptocurrencies projects, how that can enable people that have never, don't really have a strong background in programming to start then, you know, working with the source code. Like I, I have a guy, I have a guy who's programming XMR Bazaar for me right now. And he's, he's a good coder. In terms of, I, I don't code at all, not a developer, but he's he's able to figure out like solutions to the problems, but he's not best at coding itself. So I got to edge, like get him to use, because I feel like that's a perfect use case, yeah. right? It's like, yeah. like we'll down, just mm -hmm. you know, clean up, clean up the structure. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I think one on-prem, you know, on-prem, on-premises, large language models, you know, there's open source ones. And if you got an extra... Ten to forty thousand dollars, you can get and you can get basically, you know, a seventy billion parameter large language model, you know, running without connecting to other people's servers. I mean, when when you use ChatGPT, you're giving your data away. I mean, that I think that's problematic in certain respects. And it, yeah, you know, if you're not careful about what you feed into ChatGPT, that can be problematic. So, you know, because it's it's like, um, I had I proposed that as a as an app. I tried to get somebody to to work on it. Basically, um, a chat GPT like app that you could anonymously use and pay, you know, with Monero for your interactions, right? Yeah. I mean, they could have a server if they don't keep the logs, like, you I mean, there's, there seems like there, there's theoretical ways to make that happen, you know, with the exponential pace of technologies, um, you know, uh, it, it's all converging in a lot of ways. Somebody um, built it now. Somebody built it now. They built it for uh, Nano. I have to reach okay. out to her and have her Is that own. a website or Twitter handle or? Uh, I forget what it's called. Okay. I'll, maybe later I'll, I'll try to. Yeah. 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 I, I think that's it. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. we need to secure the ability to be able to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise we're going to be, you know, part of the. Yeah. Story. I really see analog technology as a hedge. And I, I've, I, uh, you know, like with self-driving cars, like I think the Congress, of the United States wants to put in like kill switches of vehicles by 2026 or something. Yeah, Same yeah. thing. Even Teslas already are all hooked into. I mean, Teslas are a cool car. I've I've driven in them. But I mean, if they're all hooked into the servers and hooked up to computers, like if you know they could just get shut down, if whoever has enough power to do that wanted to do that. Yeah. Um, I mean, hopefully it wouldn't happen. You need but, your you know, you decentralized. Yeah, you need your own engine. And, and, yeah. yeah, but I mean, analog technology. Even if you had a, an electric car, but it was not connected to the internet, you know, like that would. I mean, it could still get just computers fried, and hence get even a gasoline and car is more of a hedge than you know an electric car in that respects so um but i mean it's all about free like you know that biden is trying to like ban gas stoves and you know ban light bulbs and i mean i don't know i might be using a little bit of hyperbole there but i don't think it's too far from the truth uh what do you what do you think that's all about do you think that's about global governments trying to control people uh you know, I, I don't try, like I, so again, having a background in psychology, I don't try to like, be like, I think this is definitely the truth. I like to think in percentages, you know? So like, you know, maybe there's like a one or 2% uh, 
you know, like I think Elon Musk uh, tweeted about a reference to Pizzagate, um, you know, in the last week or two. He deleted the tweet. Like I, I saved, I just, you know, it's you could find it. And, um, you know, so like I'm not saying that stuff is true. Like there, there's a psychologist, uh, Joseph Pierre, he's on Twitter, is Psych Unseen. And like I read an article uh, a long time ago that he wrote and I didn't realize it was him on Twitter until the last couple of years. But I mean, he's like a psychiatrist at UCLA and he's like, uh, you know, studies conspiracy theories and disinformation. I mean, he takes the position, oh, it's all fake and false. And it's like, obviously, I'm the correct all knowing psychiatrist and I can dictate what truth is, um, you know, and. Uh, but, yeah, as, as far as, like, you know, like, what is all that about with CBDCs? Um, how do you, how not, do you see so the my, my you philosophy see the compete? Hmm? How do you see? I mean, we're entering a stage now where we're going to have cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Monero competing with government CBDCs and other forms of, of money, yeah. right? It's going to be like the never, never yeah. in history have we had this many protocols competing to be money. And it's going to be an all out. So how do you, how do you see that shaking out? Obviously is that, you know, the billion. Well, I, uh, I mean, if, if the, uh, so central banked digital currency, so basically like I'm anti-coercion. So I don't know if you'd call, if I'm anti-coercion, I don't know if you would call that me being an agorist. So it's like, if the federal reserve wants to have a digital currency, central bank digital currency and people is an option to use and, you know, uh, like if it's optional and not coerced, it's like, I don't really care too much. But then if they start using it for nefarious purposes and in a way that's coercive, then that's when I really start to have a problem with it, you know? Um, so they can't give the other, they can't disadvantage the other options, right? They need to let all of them compete equally. Other options being like Monero, Bitcoin Cash. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the ideal, right? Like, you know, maybe we'll see that down in Argentina, right? Where, where all these yeah. different, forms of money are considered legal tender right and then and that the new president got elected to argentina there's, there's some pretty interesting stuff with that if you don't know if you follow yeah that yeah, of course. yeah 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 <laughs> so um yeah i mean uh you, you know so thomas saw actually writes a lot about freedom and he says you know freedom and personal responsibility are two sides of the same coin you know if if you don't it, uh emphasize personal responsibility as much as like you can't really have freedom without also having personal responsibility. So, um, and crypto is a great example of that, right? Like you literally have to hold your own, your own key. Yeah. If you lose it, that shit, you're done. Like you, there's yeah. All, oh, with that comes great, great freedom and liberty. The ability to, you know, move around with your, your value without being surveilled or censored in any way. Yeah. It, and I, I don't know. I, I think I mentioned like memo.cash and member.cash. So I don't, I've heard things, I don't know if this is true, maybe you can tell me, but I've heard things like there was going to be some way to have like some uh, op return or memo on the Monero, but then like the devs made it so like that's not going to be possible or something. Do you know what I'm referring to? Or Yeah, no, you're referring to ordinals, like ordinals, but for Monero. Okay, that's called ordinals and that's like just extra data basically tacked on. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's basically like trying to uh, attach NFTs to... Ah, I'm going to, okay. Actions using... Yeah additional adding additional data to the transaction mm -hmm. um, which essentially is is actually not is un you can't really stop that right from happening it's it's not really possible on monero one way or another you can embed data into the transactions but monero was set up in a way where it made it like super easy to do so with this field that's really not necessary uh otherwise transaction extra hmm. uh so the the thought is to deprecate that and not making it as easy to embed data. But at the end of the day, you can still, you can still embed, embed the data if you're willing to pay enough in cost to do so. Yeah, and that's really been the, when I used to go on the BTC, you know, B, BTC is I think the Bitcoin ticker, but the BTC subreddit is is Bitcoin Cash. And it's so like, it has like a millions of, like 1.2 million subscribers, but it has so few upvotes. I mean, I think there's like, you know, maybe bot farms like download and stuff or whatever. But I mean, that was, I think there was a talk about that. Like basically a lot of people took the philosophy, no transaction is spam. Like if, as long as people are paying the fees, there's no such thing as a spam transaction. 
And yeah, I still the same. It just just adjusted itself to make that type of spam more expensive. Right? Yeah. And, and I'll just say this in case any Monero devs see this. I mean, so like memo.cash and it used to be member.cash, but I, I, I don't know if you've heard me reference those when I was on the community talk one time, but basically, I mean, it's a decentralized social network using the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. But again, it's pseudonymous because of Bitcoin Cash. If something could be enabled like that for Monero, where it's anonymous transactions that people could add on information in an anonymous way, and then it could either have a features like Twitter or member.cash is more like Reddit because they would actually take the Bitcoin Cash off return uh, text and then string them together into paragraphs. So it could all be stored on the blockchain. I mean, th that's... Again, why I think Monero is better because it has built-in privacy, and I think that would be my philosophy: is sort of decentralize everything possible. Like an ideal world, you know, if we could decentralize every company in the S&P 500, like I think that'd be really freaking awesome. And all the dividends are paid in crypto, and you know, anybody can get involved in any company. And it's like, you know, remove gatekeepers, decentralize everything. I mean, that that's probably not realistic, but I, I think it's a an interesting idea to think about. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's why I'm here. I want to decentralize everything. Mm -hmm. it seems like the right way to go, but yeah. it, it, it's a difficult battle. Do you yeah. so do you, do you think it's 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 possible to to win that battle? Oh, uh, well, I'm an optimist, and uh, so you know the whole defeating aging thing. So you know, like just in the last week, you heard, have you heard of the X Prize Foundation? You know, Peter Diamandis uh, helps run that. But you know, there's there's a, there was a SpaceX Prize for like twenty five million dollars. That's been around for probably twenty or thirty years, and they've had these like you know five to $20 million prizes somewhere to like, I think Virgin Galactic, where that was one of the things that they originally competed in. There was the, I can't remember the name of it, but it was basically, you know, get like a private company to, to send vehicles to low earth orbit and Virgin Galactic, I think maybe won that one. I might, I might be saying some of that wrong, but I mean, that's, that's the gist of it. In the last, uh, you know, week, I think they announced it on the 30th, there's a $101 million longevity X prize. I'm not sure because I haven't read the details of it too much other than seeing what it's, it's about, but like Ray, Ray Kurzweil, have you have you heard of that book, The Singularity is Near? By yeah. Ray Kurzweil, you know he also wrote a book called like The Age of Spiritual Machines. And I think Ray Kurzweil, I mean he he he's like in his probably late sixties or early seventies. You know he patented I think the first like uh, text to voice technologies or vice versa. You know twenty or thirty years ago, and he was the director of engineering at Google for five or ten years in the last fifteen years. You know, basically his thought is with like, you know, chat GPT technologies, you know, we're going to be able to use artificial intelligence to basically, you know, extend the healthy human lifespan. Like, you know, uh, Aubrey de Grey, who I uh, heard, I was at a talk once in like 2012, but I mean, he wrote the book called Ending Aging, the Rejuvenation Breakthroughs that Could Reverse Human Aging in Our Lifetime. And uh, like he actually is on a Steve Aoki song, if you know who that artist Steve Aoki is, uh, he's a electronic musician, you know, millions of listeners on Spotify probably, but uh, yeah, I mean, the whole like defeating aging, you know, if, if we take the long term, like they've said, you know, the first person to be a thousand is already alive, you know, like, um, that's, you know what I mean? That's and they don't say that for sure. Like even Aubrey de Grey says like, if things go really well, there's, you know, a 50% chance that we could defeat aging in the next, you know, 20 years. So if aging is defeated, you know, what are, what are the biggest, you know, you, obviously study this pretty closely so give us give us kind of the summary here how how is how are we going to defeat no. aging or like sure. what, you know, very fair question so there's a couple different theories of that there the, so the that book ending aging basically so within biomedical gerontology so you know gerontology the study of aging and biomedicine you know there's basically it's been pretty non-controversial even among mainstream uh gerontologists like there's seven types of age-related damage in the body i used to be able to like list them all, but it's like intracellular junk, extracellular junk, uh, mitochondrial mutations, um, uh, nuclear cancer causing mutations, uh, uh, cellular crosslinks, I don't know, one or two others, basically take a damage repair approach. So in the sense of if somebody has a car or a house, you know, there's, there's houses, there's buildings that have stood for thousands of years. And how do they stand for thousands of years? You repair the damage. And our bodies from the time we were born are accruing damage that is age related, uh, but it only becomes a problem past a certain threshold, you know, like cancer and uh, heart disease, you know, for the most part, I mean, uh, I mean, there is pediatric cancer, but it increases exponentially as people enter like, you know, their, especially like, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth decade of life. Um, it's just a part of aging. So 
you know, the idea is uh, metabolism is incredibly complex. So like Aubrey de Grey has basically said, you're not really probably going to succeed in defeating aging by messing with metabolism. It's just, it's too complex. But if you just take the, you know, if there's seven or eight different types of age related damage and figure out ways to mitigate each one, then we could in theory live indefinitely. Ray Kurzweil, the author of The Singularities is Near, I think he's more talks about like, um, using simulated biology and like nanobots to like repair the body. I mean, so I think that approach probably has credibility, although it's a little more abstract, I think, than trying to actually just take a biomedical uh, damage repair approach. But um, yeah, I mean, th those are, I th and there might be, those are the two main theories that I think have any possibility of succeeding. Um, so yeah, longevity, escape velocity is the idea, you know, there's like escape velocity for, for rockets, but longevity escape velocity is the, you know, at the point where we are increasing the average human lifespan one year, every year, at least. And then if that happens, people could in theory live indefinitely. There's also the theories with like doing it digitally as well, right? Like, so kind of. Oh, like mind uploading. I mean, that gets a little old trend. Yeah, yeah, humanism, yeah, which is almost, right. I think, more like a religious thing. Right. Like oh. mind uploading and yeah. you know, saving a copy of, of where that person currently is in there. Yeah, that mind. raises and then the vessel could always be brought back and it can continue, you know, plug back in. Yeah, cryonics. So Alcor is one of the, the main cryonics organizations. If you've, you know, it's like the idea of vitrifying the body after death in hopes that later technology could then revive it. But Max Moore was the CEO of the Alcor Foundation for a while. He had a PhD in philosophy. And I think he his sort of area of study is like, what makes you, you? Now, it sort of relates to what you're, you're talking about a little bit, but. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't call myself a transhumanist per se, because even if aging is defeated, age-related deaths are only about one third of all deaths on Earth. You know, about one hundred fifty thousand people die every day on Earth. Approximately one hundred thousand deaths are from aging per day. So even if aging is defeated, about fifty thousand people would still die. Uh, you know, every year from you know, accidents, drug overdoses, um, you know, suicide, uh, so on and so forth. You know, all, all this stuff is not age-related. Are you personally living a life where you think is is best suited for, uh, you know, living the longest possible life? Are you, are you like uh, I try to get healthy. I'm mostly pescatarian. Um, you know, I uh, I I'm into like yoga sort of stuff. And um, I mean, is, I'm, is I'm, I'm are you researching as well or not? You're just it, what as far as like the biomedical stuff. Like, do I want to do the research or yeah, like how to perfect like personally try to extend your life using oh, any methods uh, available today? I don't think other than diet and exercise and, you know, getting medical care when needed, I don't think there's a lot we can do to, uh, until the actual science and technology uh, facilitates that. I mean, I think the longest living human ever was Marie Clement, who lived to like 122 in France. And, you know, there's people in Japan who are over 110 years old. But, you know, as it stands, you know, once people, you know, even if somebody's going to be really healthy 110 year old you know it's like once they're hitting their 100 105 120 is they're not you know i've seen videos of people like you know 84 a woman who's 84 doing doing uh, cartwheels i mean that's freaking awesome and people in their 80s you know doing yoga and you okay. know jogging or maybe and walking but i mean but once somebody's 105 110 i'm not sure how much cartwheels or you know gymnastics they're doing um you know so i aside from you know if aging is not defeated you know, like, you know, uh, if, if we're in our, you know, wherever we're at now, we're probably not going to live past 110, 120. And that's like, if that's the like 0.001% of the population or less that lives to 110, 0.001% or something. Well, I have no you idea. said earlier that the person that's going to live to a thousand may already be alive. So you think yeah, that might like uh, it's de not a definite thing like no, it's it, not a definite yeah. thing. but do you do you think the number the average age is gonna like drastically go up uh, i mean it, it has that potential i mean i i hope so no but in, um, the, in the near future are we like entering the well because of covid and fentanyl i think the average human lifespan has gone down over the last couple of years yeah. in the united states even by a yeah, significant yeah. amount yeah. um yeah so so in relation to transhumanism, and I, I will I will show this book, The Art of Peace by Mori Hayushiba. Like he talks, so this is a you know Japanese founder of Aikido. He talks about establishing heaven on earth and stuff. Like, I mean, well, it, unless it's like mistranslated or misquoted. I mean, it talks about, so like, you know, CBDCs. So like, you know, uh, I don't want to switch gears if you don't want to switch gears too much. But yeah, um, 
Yeah. So like, you know, the United States has gun rights in the Second Amendment. So most other countries don't have that. So in one sense, the United States has like the largest standing army on on Earth. It's like, you know, uh, and then as far as preserving, you know, it's like if they say like the Second Amendment protects the First Amendment. Because, I mean, you go to certain countries, you can't say certain stuff because, I mean, you know, of course, it, some speech is considered a legal speech in the United States, you know, as far as, I mean, you can, I probably don't even say exactly what sort of speech that is. I mean, you could probably know what sort of illegal speech is in the United States where people can yeah. cause problems for people. Uh, but, uh, and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong on that. I'm not a lawyer or nothing. Um, but it, it's not really what you're referring to, but. <laughs> oh, you know, I mean, so with this, I think the most popular one is like, you know, yelling fire in a crowded theater. I mean, yes. is that legal? I mean, I'm not a lawyer. Is that legal to do? I would, I've never done it. I'm not planning to. No. If it, yeah. <laughs> or like if somebody has a danger to self, you know, it's like in psychiatry. Yeah. You can't cite riots. Yeah. If, if somebody says, you know, uh, you know, I'll just talk about in the context of psychiatry, a danger to self or others. So like the therapeutic state, another book by Saws, he wrote another book called Pharmocracy. Basically the idea of, you know, if you have, uh, you know, the, uh, theocracy is the rule of priests. You know, a democracy is supposedly the rule of people. So a pharmocracy is the rule of doctors, the rule of medicine. So, you know, like our society is so medicalized. I and mean, if you look at what happened during COVID, gym shut down in California. They tried to shut down places of worship and that got overturned in the courts. You know, there's um, and, uh, you know, this this thing has a ninety nine point nine or whatever, ninety nine point seven survival rate. I don't know the exact number, but there's these people who are 20 or 30. Like you can't go to the gym, you know, and we're going to ruin your business, destroy the economy. And, and even Trump said, uh, you know, we don't want to make the solution worse than the problem. Um, so as far as, you know, the art of peace, creating heaven on earth, defeating aging, I mean, the, I, I think about all this stuff. Like, I mean, if you, you said my YouTube video, you know, I have YouTube videos on A Course in Miracles and spirituality. I'm, it's too eclectic. I actually, I'm actually thinking about creating like separate YouTube channels, but um, you know, you more, more go way, you go way back. I saw like it was like 11 years ago. Right. Yeah, that stuff from there, but yeah. Uh, so, you know, danger to self for others with free speech, you know, like if somebody is one, yeah. people do not have your entire personality is already uploaded. You're, you're, you're good to get yeah, exactly uh, my future self. I, I, I've been, I gotta love it. Yeah. So my, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's really, it was unintentional planning, but, um, anyway, uh, as far as far as yeah, legal speech and agorism, yeah. Anyway, I, 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 I'm getting a little bit diffuse here, so you know, feel free to refocus the, the no, no worries, no worries. Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans, and if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, Gratuitous, and Monero. Oh, and this is that book, All Right to Drugs. Yeah, and you, you always so, use back yeah. to uh, Thomas Sage. I will tell you that. So, uh, where was Anyway, that yeah, that book. So, the, so now when you say that, because you mean the, the psychiatry stuff, the aging stuff, or both? Or... I would say specifically the psychiatry stuff because I feel like the aging stuff is part of this like core philosophy. Oh, yeah. psychiatry stuff. How well, you... Yeah. Go ahead. So I worked with, uh, you know, I I worked with people diagnosed with various psychotic disorders, schizoaffective. I used to pass drugs to these people. Like it, it's it. This abuse is so hidden. It's so tragic. And that and the thing is, in our culture, it's a really messed up system that we live in because you have like the National Institute of Mental Health. And, um, it's just, if you actually look at what goes on, it's so freaking tragic. Like, uh, you know, ki like this book anatomy of an epidemic, like people say how, like, you know, the COVID vaccine causes, you know, heart issues and they've minimized the health problems related to that. Like the, one could say the exact same thing about psychiatry, as far as like, you know, even, you know, uh, on a lot people like psychiatrist, Peter Bregan has written articles like more psychiatric drugs, more shooting, some that effect. I, I'd have to find the exact title. Um, but like SSRIs cause, you know, I mean, I'm not saying this, like even I think Robert F. Kennedy, you know, RFK, I think talks about this. Um, and it gets a little controversial, 
Uh, but you know, like, um, as far as, you know, if you look at the rates of disability for, so, I mean, so I went to school, I have a master's degree in counseling psychology. I got a bachelor's degree in psychology and, you know, I worked as a counselor for four or so years. I got halfway towards licensure. I got a little burnout and jaded and decided to, you know, for transition to other stuff. Um, but as far as, so, you know, I'm in my thirties now. So, I mean, I've been sort of looking at, and, and by the way, when I was a kid, this stuff fascinated me. I remember when I was a child. And learning about oh schizophrenia it was very interesting to me in the sense of if somebody you know thinks they're jesus or says there's spiders crawling over the ceiling or um you know uh says they're going to different universes or space aliens visit them it was like in my mind i'm like well one are they lying or two is the brain really creating like are they literally actually seeing that um you know uh like so there's i just found that very fascinating in general and then, you know, I go to school and um, in 2006, I was introduced there. So that book, the, the, his first book, The Myth of Mental Illness, it was a class called Gender and Madness. And we read the essay, The Myth of Mental Illness. And um, it was very interesting to me because it basically it talks about psychiatry being the medicalization of problems and living. So, you know, Thomas Saws has quotes like psychiatry is not medicine, it is economics and politics. And that, you know, be a way to tie Monero and crypto into all that. But, you know, the, the end of poverty and like, you know, cryptocurrency, universal basic income as a way to lift people out, out of poverty. Well, I was into crypt, looking into crypto UBI for a decent little while. So it's very interesting, but there's like civil problems, which actually civil problems, speaking, bring it back to psychiatry, you know, dissociative identity disorder, multiple personality disorder, you know, a famous case, Sybil, you know, that's what the, within crypto, crypto UBI, that's the civil problem. <laughs> and we live in this culture where, uh, you know, um, everybody believes in psychiatry you know, it's like, oh, somebody's depressed. Well, they need an antidepressant. So again, if the rates of disability for like bipolar. So for example, one side effect of SSRIs, potentially they can induce mania. So then, you know, 40, 50 years ago, the amount of people diagnosed with bipolar was incredibly small. And the amount of people on disability for, you know, depression and bipolar and stuff and anxiety was like exponentially less than it is now. So like that book, uh, Robert by Robert Whitaker, Anatomy of an Epidemic, it sort of explores the idea of like, are these dr psychiatric drugs worsening the problems that they're meant to supposedly help? Like within, uh, so like there's people, there's a whole like psychiatric survivors movement. Um, and, uh, it's, you know, it's like, yeah, that it's just driven by, by greed, by capital. Yeah, probably. So like, like, for example, with SSRIs and antidepressants, you know, when they get these drugs approved by the FDA, they do like six or 12 week studies. It might be like 12 week studies. And then so, OK, so supposedly that helps people over 12 weeks. But then if you actually look at the research, like one, they'll sometimes do like, you know, seven or 12 studies. And like, you know, uh, a third of the studies show that the drugs are useless. A third of the drug, a third of the studies show the drugs are harmful. And then a third of the studies show they're helpful. So then then those get, are the ones that get submitted to the FDA. And then, oh, the FDA says, oh, okay, well, now these SSRIs are safe and effective to treat depression. And like, there's a psych, uh, psych it's actually, so a podcast, radically genuine podcast by Dr. Roger McFillin. He's a psychologist and he's on Twitter. If you go follow him on Twitter, I think you'll find his stuff maybe very interesting if this interests you whatsoever, Roger McFillin. Um, and he, you know, he, he talks about, he, he works with, he's a psychologist, works with kids. Like he talks about teenage girls calling themselves Lexa hoes. Like you heard of that drug Lexapro? So, you know, like, uh, uh, I mean, you can see the context of all this stuff, you know, if you look at his tweets, but as far as like, um, you know, these drugs, like people take on the size of their identity. I am bipolar. I am schizophrenic. I'm depressed. And like, you know, again, if somebody wants to identify like that, great. Like, you know, what one, one quote of saws, I like an aphorism. It's like, there is no psychology. There is only uh, biography and autobiography. So, you know. And he also talks about sick from above versus sick from below. So, you know, somebody saying, oh, I think I might be autistic or I might be depressed versus psychiatrist saying you're bipolar, you're psychotic, you need these drugs. And you look at these drugs, like people on antipsychotics, I mean, the side effects are like neuroleptic malignant syndrome, sudden cardiac death, diabetes, weight gain. I mean, the side effects are just horrible. And they, for they literally force people on these drugs, like, um, you know, or, and, or coerce people if not forced, like. It used to be that anybody can get locked up for any reasons before like this saws actually, you know, homosexuality used to be considered a mental disorder. It used to be, you know, it used to be illegal. Saws is one of the first psychiatrists to say, yeah, maybe we shouldn't call uh, homosexuality a, 
a psychiatric disorder. Same thing, if you look up uh, drapetomania, it was a proposed mental disorder back in like the 1800s where if a slave didn't want to be a slave, well, they have a mental illness because, you know, it's natural that, I mean, this, the logic is pretty warped and racist, but, you know, it was a proposed mental disorder that, you know, they have a, a you know, a mental problem if they don't want to be a slave. So wow. it's pretty messed up. Like the history, like Nellie Bly is a really interesting case. She wrote a book called like 12 Days in a Madhouse. This is like from the late 1800s, early 1900s, but she basically did like an expose, a series of exposés on like the mental institutions in New York. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, Saws has written about that. Like, so uh, I mean, you're, you're basically saying let let all person personalities and types freely freely compete, right? Is is what you're saying? You I mean, in one sense, it's like you know, Thomas Saws advocated for outlaw. He said civil commitment and the insanity defense form the foundations of psychiatric slavery. And he wrote a book called Psychiatric Slavery, which is about a Supreme Court case, the Donaldson case. So, uh, yeah. Um, what else we got here? Oh, and this, by the way, this is that book, Ending Aging, the Rejuvenation Breakthroughs I Could Have Reversed Human Aging in Our Lifetime. Um, yeah, so... Oh, sorry. You can add part out if you want. Hey, <laughs> a little flavor, but... Um, you know, yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, you got any Monero, but you need some Monero books over there, man. You, you need... I know. Are there many Monero books? <laughs> like there's, you know, the Bitcoin um, standard. How many Monero books are there? There is somebody just released the Monero standard. It had, uh, I don't, yeah. know, I don't know if he shipped it yet. Interesting. Uh, and then what's the, uh, the other one? Oh, wow. I'm just searching a store, which I don't shop on anymore and up for different products. Oh, Monero, the, the cryptocurrency king mm. by Chris Jones. Uh, I don't know that one. Um, I see a lot of swag. There's a lot of swag. Blockchain. Yeah, there's see books. But yeah, no, I, I hear you about Monero. I mean, that's so, yeah, tying it back to this all to Monero. Like, I mean, you know, Bitcoin Cash from Monero. Uh, one, so Monero, I think, needs to be easier. To, have you used the Bitcoin Cash, the Bitcoin.com wallet? No. So... I've used a Monero wallet. I, and recently, I I don't you know I don't have a lot of crypto. I just find it a fascinating technology that I think has the potential to do a lot of good. But so I had a Monero Cake wallet, and for like the last seven or eight months, it showed a zero balance, and there wasn't a zero balance. So you know, I mess with the app, fiddle with it, like okay, yeah, I give up. Try later. Right. And then yeah, so I had to sync like 300, 500,000 blocks. It took like you know two or three hours, and it wasn't even super intuitive that I, that is specifically what I needed to do. Right. And then I was like. Sync your wallet back before when you create it. I'm like, when did I create it exactly? Was it like 13 months ago, 12 months ago? It's so like, I guess I'll just try to make my best guess and pick a few months before. Yeah. And I'm not even sure I was correct, but it ended up showing my And they're trying to balance. I mean, yeah, no, the, these these problems still exist, but but I think, you know, Monero got the the hard part right. And now it is iterating to become more and more usable by the day. So like even that problem will be solved soon. Yeah, so you address format, um, a new way of saving your seed in only uh, I think twelve words instead of twenty five, oh. and then with that seed, the, the uh, block height I think will be embedded in there as well. So it's like you'll, so mm -hmm. you, your seed will always start from the date of when you originally started using your wallet. But yeah, yeah. no, no excuse. There, there, well, there's currently issues for sure. When you say the hard part, you mean the privacy part? Yeah, the privacy part. Being being digital cash, it's, it's, it's yeah. clunky if you on how you use if you use it, you know it's it's built it's built well, but the the user interface aspect of it is still improving. Oh yeah, but the actual you know structures works what? very well. It's like a, a, a very good protocol for sending digital cash peer to peer without surveillance or censorship or you know. Yeah. And uh, you know, I think a really good point of sale system is probably, there may be a point of sales already for Monero. I think, I, I think I've heard of that. Yeah. There is one. Mm -hmm. So you could, so like we use WooCommerce, there's, uh, you can use the yeah. Monero gateway embedded into WooCommerce and there's, there's other people are, Monero, development has really picked up on the fringes of Monero, mm -hmm. right? So not just the, the code yeah. being developed, but now you're seeing a lot of different services being built for Monero. I'm working myself on a few like Monero related projects, like things I'll, I'll be offering the community. Monero Noto. Monero Noto. Yeah. 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 XMR Bazaar. Uh, and I'm seeing a lot of other projects being worked on, which is, which is exciting. People are, 
trying to build a, a you know a circular economy with Monero, right? Yeah, I think uh, Bcash as well, right? Bitcoin Cash as well. Bitcoin Cash. No, <laughs> I'll never understand that psychology, man. Well, I mean, I, I think it's <laughs> by me. Like, explain that to me. You're the psychologist. So, no, I, I. So I think you're people not are not. You're not. That was a joke, right? You actually don't give a shit, right? Please tell me you don't. I mean, I don't really like. I personally don't really care. I just think it's a little bit funny. It's, like I was, uh, yeah. Well, I I don't really remember what the gripe was with it. It's just a branding. Well, they didn't want I, to be. Branded. I mean, I I think people against Bitcoin Cash. You're like, I'm Bitcoin Core, and how dare you split off from us and fracture the community? And we're Bitcoin Core, and we have all the hash power, and you have this stupid thing called Bcash, and yada yada. And then like it, they want to use it like a slur. It's like you know. Yeah, yeah. grade school middle school like you know like ribbing and then you know or high you know high, high school like and I, I just think it's funny but i mean language really matters i mean the thomas saws wrote about the power of language yeah. crazy and uh you know, yeah thomas saws actually says the, the word is the strongest drug because you know without language we couldn't create synthetic drugs we couldn't create with without language we could not create monero mm-hmm. without language we could not create nuclear technology and cars or or even according to Thomas Sodd's, even religion for that matter. Like, you know, language he's is code. an atheist. So in like in code is language. Yeah. Pat like GPT can generate code. Yeah. Bitcoin cash. I, I, I did a search on a certain search engine and I searched for Bitcoin cash point of sale. And like the first result was Bitcoin.com, Bitcoin cash or brick and mortar businesses. You know, Roger Ver and other people in the, the in the B cash community, if you want to call it that, sorry guys in the in the Bitcoin cash community. Um, you know, like there's people that gone around to different, you know, jurisdictions that are very friendly to crypto and they've really tried to get local adoption. Like I, I don't know to what degree yeah. people are doing yeah. that Monero. Yeah. Yeah. No, Monero. I, I think, uh, yeah. Bitcoin cash is, is, uh, is ahead of the game on that for sure. Yeah. So it's like, Monero, it's, you're starting to see with Monero. I, I just came back from Argentina. I went to Buenos Aires cause I went to La BitConf down there. Mm. And we're doing recon to see if we're going to do the next Monerotopia down there. But then we all, I also went and visited this village, uh, Ibereta in, uh, Formosa region of Argentina, uh, which is a little town where they started using Monero. They started adopting Monero. This young kid, he, um, he's the head of his, his soccer league there in the town. And he got him and, and his teammates to, to start using it. Actually, the, the reason they were initially using it is because they, they wanted to uh, access gambling websites, right? And so Monero, Monero was the tool for that purpose. And then they, with the Monero, they started among themselves, started trading Monero for, you know, for pesos, right? In and out of pesos because they had a need for that Monero to go use it. Uh, and then they got local stores to agree to accept Monero because lots of times the people that ran the stores were also part of this group that was using Monero for for soccer, right? Uh, and so it kind of organically blossomed there, and you have a, a little town. I mean, granted, it's not sustainable in any way, but there, there's been this kind of natural push. No, it, we'll see, we'll organic see. and natural is great. Yeah, we'll uh, see if the continues yeah. i think a certain guest on your uh on the on the saturday morning show talked about like memes and art to help promote monero and i think that's a great idea to like and i've, I've almost seen more of that on twitter too i think a lot more memes and stuff and uh yeah but as far as adoption you know i think like style the was talking about bitcoin cash is ready now and you know even the transaction fees for bitcoin cash versus Monero, i think they're like I don't know, they might be like two or three times less for Bitcoin Cash or maybe four times less. I mean, it's still like fraction of a cent at this point. So maybe people living on one I mean, of the Like I, I live all, I, you know, I use Monero every day. For me, it, it's there in terms yeah. of what, what you need where, yeah, there's, yeah. I don't see a need for, for Bitcoin Cash for, you know. Well, I, I think they can learn from each other. You yeah. Know? I mean, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash has yeah. gotten to use, has solved yeah. usability first I'd yeah. say, right yes so on youtube i searched for bitcoin cash onward merchants uh many detailed videos come up like coin spice i don't know if he's into crypto now i can't remember in court it was a court or something but like there's a bunch of videos on like onboarding merchants bitcoin cash onboard merchants youtube search and i then i searched for monero onboard merchants first one is i think monero talk monero merchant booklet so that's a great idea booklet stickers you know 
And then the third one down is a Pepe <laughs> picture with a Monero uh, blanket. But there, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of stuff like mm. here we're onboarding merchants. Again, na- organic and natural growth is great. But again, if we want to have, you know, if, if there could be a jurisdiction very friendly to Monero, whether it's, you know, in the Cayman Islands or, you know, some country in Africa or Asia, and then have people like very intentionally, you know, if, and again, if there's a great, uh, you know, there's the, on, there's the Bitcoin cash register on Google play store. Uh, uh, there's, and it has a hundred thousand downloads and 4.2 stars. So, oh. yeah. So, I mean, and, and, uh, and I've used the Bitcoin.com wallet and again, I'm not trying to promote Bitcoin cash here. If, if no, I don't. could have a wallet in point of sale that is, is good or better than Bitcoin cash and like. I would love for the privacy to be built in everywhere. Like if, if people who did they, what they did with Bitcoin Cash or Bcash, uh, um, you know, did that with Monero instead, and then you know they're getting these places where there's all this adoption. It's like that'd be awesome. That'd be great. Yeah. So I think we're starting I, to see that. I think we're yeah. Starting. So you know, memes apps that are just smooth, right. intuitive. You know, like it's not like I have to go search on. 10 different forums to find a solution to my problem and then post what, on Reddit and ask what I love me. about what I love about Monero too and being a part of it now is mm-hmm. you, know, you could you could build these services yeah. right it's yeah, uh, yeah. it's like I'll play the long game you know like patience patience right. is key oh and then you know I, I knew some people like uh, I think they took a tour in Afghanistan or here and there they're like slow is smooth smooth is fast you know like that's like that's like you can that's like a saying in the the military or something. Okay. Yeah, but also I I like to say not, not rush. Is not what, what, huh? what do you say? What do you what is that reference? So in the sense of if we if people try to move things too fast and business oh, yeah, yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. things yeah. get done wrong the first time. So yeah. it's like do things measure twice, cut once, do things right the first time. So as far as like, you know, if you, to build, you know, Monero is going slow, but it's like slow yep. is fast. You know, exactly. it's like if we're you know, in five years, 10 years, where are things going to be? Because Monero has only been around, what, since like 2014 or 2017 or something? Like 2014. So like, 2014. Yes, yeah, so like nine years old. So like, you know. It's interesting, like, yeah, if you look at the approach, the different approaches the pro- different projects took, right? Like, especially if you compare like Monero to Zcash, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Monero, like I would say Zcash was even perhaps more more cautious in ways, right? Or they wanted to focus more so more on the development uh than kind of a like uh you know having a minimal viable product to, to start growing adoption if all private cash, right? Mm. Instead they opted to focus on trying to perfect the technology uh and not, you know, do it uh Opt-in, opt-in only, right? So the, the different design decisions that were taken there is, I think, is like very, very interesting in that regard, right? Yeah. Zcash is yeah. optional, am I correct? Yes, yes. Not like, what? what's the point? Like, just use Monero right. or Bcash, Bitcoin Cash. Right. Like, I don't know. I'm saying like Monero, Monero did move a little bit fast and break things in that regard, right? They were like, we're just going to use ring signatures for now. We're going to use Cal financial transactions, self justice, or we're just going to make this thing work for now. You know, I think that's, that's interesting to take into account because that allowed Monero to grow a network effect of people that just wanted digital cash at that moment. They needed it now, like you were saying with Bitcoin Cash, right? Like it works today. Yeah. Monero's from day one has always worked as digital cash. Like you can use it for that purpose, default, not opt in. Mm. And the usability has now like kind of caught it having to catch up. Yeah. Are you going to have a follow up interview with Sally Agrist? I'm curious yeah. if you ask him that again about Bitcoin Cash and Monero, if it's responsibly the same. Uh, why? A, a lot has changed since then. What was it? That was like a year ago. I'm not totally. Uh, I mean, has a lot. I mean, this is stuff moves pretty fast in the space, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't know. You tell me. So, like, has have like I don't really follow Bitcoin Cash that yeah. closely. So I don't know. I, you're saying there's a, a different dynamic now between the two. Oh, I mean, honestly, I haven't followed it a whole lot. I, I, I get so if you go on BTC.reddit, like it used to be a lot different there two or four years ago. I, I feel like, I mean, I, I don't want to be critical, but I, I I feel like the, like, you know. If you look at Bitcoin.com, like they're trying to get all this stuff, like, I don't know, it's called verse or something. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. And like, I, I hope it succeeds if that's what the project is, but 
it is it's you know and for a little while there was smart bch which they you know is smart contracts on bitcoin cash but then there was like an off ramp and on ramp and it was supposed to be decentralized and then you know it's like well it's not centralized yet and i think it was released by some like chinese people and then oh uh it just created a lot of problems it seemed like like i i was messing around with the you know um the uh what was called the farming on the on smart bch it was, it was sort of cool you know i i didn't really farmed on ethereum if you, you know about farming with you know uh the uh, market makers and whatever um but uh uh yeah um i mean you know i don't i don't have a you know yeah i like the technology and like you know decentralizing twitter with like memo.cash like i i think you should put monero talk you should have a, a memo.cash monero talk account because there's a community on there and that i mean if, i don't again tell me about, tell me about memo, memo yeah so memo.cash uh it's um, they, it says, so it's a website by, uh, Jason, something on Twitter it runs it in the, there, I forked the source code at some point. I don't know if the source code is still available, but I at least have some version in the past of the source code, but you know, so yeah, so they take the Bitcoin cash transaction memos and you, you know, you can, allow, it's like 180 characters or something, you know, Twitter's like 280 now, but the amount of characters on the off return is like 180 or something. So, you know, you, you just post it, it has an interface like Twitter. And then, you know, you can go like new, new post here. I'll, I'll post something and then I'll send you the link on, t on, uh, on Twitter here. So, um, I don't honestly, it's not the fastest sites. Hmm? I don't have access to my phone right now, but yeah, oh, go ahead. Oh. you can do it anyway. And I'll see you later. Okay. Yeah. You can, you can see it later here. I'll, I'll just tweet you the yeah, here. Yeah. Um, I am talking about Monero, Monero FTW for the win. Monero. Whoops. Yeah, I'm talking about Monero. So Monero. Is, it, is it getting a lot of usage? Uh, well, it's not like a terrible. Like they have a stats on the bottom, and the stats. Uh, and like you, sometimes I, I go in there periodically. I'll go to posts, and then I'll just sort by sort of like what I do on Reddit. Like I'll go and sort by like you know top, and then you know maybe by week or month because again, it's it's not you know Twitter. There's like millions of posts a minute probably on Twitter, but then like on um so the stats so there's in total on memo.cast there's 254,000 posts 296,000 replies uh and then also you you could have your wallet so you could tip people bitcoin cash on there um and then all again all the data is stored on the bitcoin cash blockchain so in theory somebody could run another instance of it if they use the same protocol uh and then total actions is 1.7 million total users 30,000. So, I mean, if you look at how large like those like uh Lemmy and Mastodon instances are like Monero.town, I mean, it's probably comparable Monero, or Monero, Monero would never want to go down that road though. Of, of I mean, if 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 somebody figures out how to do it, well, yeah, people but, uh, in Monero need to communicate, Monero's, right? That, like I mean, people people need to communicate. Like, we're using a central. Well, no, Monero, Monero is more. like dead set on being a protocol just for digital cash, right? Yeah. So the fear is want to integrate with other services, like not not in a way where it could potentially affect the fungibility of of the project in any way. That's fair, but like yeah. Monero town, like you know, tipping in Monero or just like a, a pay. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, that that works. That works. That works. But like what you're saying. This uh, this uh, Bitcoin Cash where they're putting the message in the memo field, like not saying, yeah, Monero the, is deprecating ability. Like I said, you could theoretically still do it, but it's going to be yeah. it's like cost prohibitive, you know. Yeah. So it, if you can indulge me, I, what, what, do you know much about the status of or lack thereof of smart contracts with Monero? Like I've heard there's been some maybe projects where you have a, a layer two or something sort of interface with it for smart contracts. Do you do you know much about? Have you heard anything about that? Uh, I mean, there's there's multi signature. Monero never really had good multi signature, right? That kind of that kind of you know leads you towards doing uh, smart contracts. Uh, but it's made some recent improvements in multi signature. We with XMR Bazaar have developed our own multi signature escrow system for 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 transactions that will be made. Um, okay. So it's it's making progress there in terms of like a layer two. Nobody's built a layer two. There's been proposed like general uh, theoretical proposals on how like layer twos can be built on Monero, but yeah. nobody's but, currently did, working on a layer two. Would you agree that Lightning with Bitcoin Core is just a total mess? 
Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I think everybody in Monero is like, this is what we've been trying to tell you. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah. It definitely, yeah, Bitcoin Cash, right? Is like this is what you know. Yeah. This is so, I think there was actually a recent upgrade with Bitcoin Cash to have cash tokens where they they could. Uh, so again, there was Smart BCH, and then they're like, oh, we're gonna have a decentralized on ramp, and then that I think that just created a lot of problems and people lost money. And this with cash tokens, I think they're saying now we can have a decentralized on ramp to smart contracts with Bitcoin Cash. And like again, if we want to have you know if we wanted to decentralize the S and P five hundred, it's like well, I think you sort of need smart contracts. If you want to have dividends. Oh, and I think I think I, did I reference this on the community segment where in theory, so there was a dividend calculator with with Bitcoin Cash on the Bitcoin.com site. You could basically have a list of addresses and then you know send uh, you know a hundred Bitcoin Cash to one address and it'll distribute that to you know a thousand other addresses. Mm -hmm. And like you know, it, and I think I mentioned it. And, and again, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself based on something I said before, but I mean, again, if you could have if Monero Nodo, for example, a potential service or feature of Monero Nodo, maybe if it has a plugin feature, mm -hmm. you could have Monero Nodo where you know you could input a uh, ten thousand Monero addresses. And then send one person send you know 500 Monero to one address on that Monero Nodo, and then that then uses scripts to go ahead and you know s distribute that hundred Monero to ten thousand Monero addresses, you know, and that could be a way to basically have dividends, you know, effectively without smart contracts. It'd be like sort of a centralized solution to things that smart contracts are sort of meant for. Maybe I don't know if that makes sense. Sort of how I'm phrasing that. Um, yeah, I'll totally follow up. I, I do think we're going to see smart contract mm -hmm. solutions for yeah. Monero. You're going to see a second layer on Monero, but it's it's yeah. going to be some time. Will it have the same problems as Lightning, though? What would it be like? <laughs> no, maybe I don't think it will. I, because yeah. I mean, it, it's all over, way over my head technologically. There are some fundamental differences between the two, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, we don't we don't need to get into that. But well, this this has been. This has been yeah. fun, man. I had a good time. I don't know. I don't know if the people listening enjoyed it, but I feel like me and you enjoyed it. Yeah. No, thank uh, you. I appreciate yeah. it. So, and I hope I didn't get too much off, off topic, but uh, yeah, I think we're, we're all over the place. Anything else you want to say with regards to Monero? And you know, it is Monero talk out after all. Like any, oh, any sort of Monero thoughts you can have? I mean, j just to sort of sum up my thinking of Monero. I mean, I think Monero is a freaking awesome technology. I think privacy is really important for freedom and just like. You know, like I think Edward Snowden says, if people don't have privacy, they change their behavior. So even the fact of not having privacy creates less freedom. So uh, some to that effect, you know, so then it's like, well, if we want to have, you know, a separation of money and state, then, you know, I think basically adoption is the way to create that. So, you know, if, if you know, in every major city in America, there was coffee shops and pizza places that, you know, you could, yeah, you could pay with your credit card if you want to through the the banking system or yeah we accept monero you know and like and again if the point of sales and wallets became intuitive enough and you know easy enough to use where it was you know frictionless so to speak you know that could create that separation of money and state and then um how do you how you do know? you see things working out politically what's your what are your theories there with regards to how cryptocurrencies like monero that are built to be unstoppable and uncooptable by governments how is that going to shake out with governments like the u.s government are they going to try to no. ban it or are they just going to let it let I mean, it be there, there's a presidential election next year and i mean I, I think that can affect a lot of things you know like there's all these court cases and uh you know i used to be totally against trump for x y or z reasons but you know I'm, i didn't i'm probably not going to vote i'll just i'm not gonna i usually just always vote third party and Sometimes I'll just write somebody's name in because it's like they're not my the candidate I would vote for is not going to win regardless. So it's like I'll just write somebody's name. I'll write your name in next. Uh, yeah, that's what I'll do, Doug. I'll write your name in for president next year because yeah. I'm not going to vote for any of the uniparty candidates. Can, can, um, can you take a picture of that and tweet it out? Maybe maybe we'll get some traction. You never know. I might do something like that. Oh, oh I'll, I'll tweet here. I'll tweet right now. Vote for Doug <laughs> for president. Douglas. Doug. Uh, well, anyway, but yeah, as far as uh, you know. Um, what's going to happen, you know, like I, I see politics sort of like a sport. Like I don't, I like, if I were going to watch sports, I like watching judo and snowboarding. I do not enjoy watching football, basketball or so on. So, and I have nothing against those sports forever. Occasionally basketball, but you don't like you know, soccer, like, man, soccer, the world cup. Oh, uh, I mean, like maybe if it's like 
I mean, if it's on at a bar, I'll, I'll watch a little bit. Right, but... All right, I just got to quickly interject yeah. here. We're, we are, as part of the conference we're doing down in Argentina, we're also going to mm-hmm. throw Copa Monero because in the small town, they, you know, with, the, with this kid I was telling you about that runs a soccer league. Oh, nice. He, he turned his little stadium into like a little Monero stadium. So we're going to have a little Monero soccer tournament. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. It should be cool. should be cool. Yeah, get the word out. Copa Monero. Awesome. But you, you don't, but you don't yeah. watch. You don't watch soccer. Continue. I interjected. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bad person now. No, 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 no I'm clowning. Uh, so I swear what we were saying with that. I'm not. Um, I shouldn't. I shouldn't have uh, thrown you off there. I know it's all good. Uh, oh, so I mean, I sort of see politics as like a sport, but it has very, very real consequences. You know, it's like it's like watching a football game or a judo match, but it has very real consequences for you know who controls the nuclear codes, who, you know, can veto bills, um, you know, who can appoint people to the SEC or uh, FTC or FDA, you know, and of course Congress has to go through, you know, and do whatever. So, you know, what will happen? I mean, again, I'm ultimately an optimist, just like, you know, I think, you know, the the free exchange of ideas like Elon Musk buying Twitter and, you know, I saw a whole lot of content get censored as it was getting censored back around the last election. You know, and now Elon Musk is mentioning Pizzagate, which I'm not saying it's true or false. Like, I'm not, I just think it's very interesting from a psychological perspective, like conspiracy theories and, you know, people say anyway, but, uh, so, you know, will we ban gas stoves and will, you know, we have CBDCs and, um, you know, are we going to censor social media or we're going to have decentralized social media, uh, you know, and, you know, yeah, we might have a voluntary central bank currency, but still, if you want to have a decentralized autonomous organization that pay dividends in Monero, you know, or it's not going to cause a bunch of problems and you're, you know, some people working for the government aren't going to decide to be jerks and morally deficient. So, uh, but no, I, I'm an optimist that pe- people will get the message that freedom and responsibility are the right choice. And to not try and promote those ideas, because, you know, in one sense, I think everything is an idea. Like, you know, um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, like, uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I'm an optimist, so ultimately. Like, you know, yeah, you got you to gotta finish that thread. You're going, every, everything's an idea. Oh, uh, so like, uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to start sounding preachy on your show. It's like, you know, um, uh I'll keep talking. Just feel free to stop me. So like, you know, um, uh, like I'll, I'll say this, Jay-Z, there's a song called, uh, drug dealers anonymous, push a T feature in Jay-Z and Jay-Z, Jay-Z references the book. A course of miracles says I'm a course of miracles in the shit. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Here in lies the peace of God. I always knew I was a prophet, but I couldn't find a different job. So, you know, like spiritually, like the art of peace, you know, Maria Yushiba, it's like, you know, there's the art of war. You know, if you've heard of the art of war by Sun Tzu, it's like there's a whole section in this book called the art of war versus the art of peace. So, I mean, like, you know, you've heard like economic warfare um, and, uh, you know, it's like we, we if we were we, we, like Marion Williamson, who who was in the presidential debates, who also wrote a bunch about A Course in Miracles, the same book Jay-Z rapped about and Beyonce quotes in the song all night, you know. She talks about creating a department of peace versus like the department of defense, like how the department of peace. So it's like, you know, if, if the, we actually had, uh, you know, government institutions that were formed by the people that represent the people, you know, that, you know, the, the government works for the people, they are public servants. So if they act like public servants rather than arrogant, power hungry people that are arrogantly stupid, we could have a great society. We could have, we could eliminate poverty, you know, like, um, you know, uh, like I, I think a privatized universal basic income. So, for example, it, it, a privatized universal basic income could be implemented very easily in certain ways. But there's just so much, you know, if you want to get a money transmission license, like if I wanted to have a nonprofit that invested, it had an asset trust investing in the S&P 500 and you could just take donations. This could all be done very inexpensively in theory, but it's the SEC and all this regulation that makes it almost impossible. It's like people go down and feed homeless people in the parks in various cities. And then like the police are like, Oh yeah, we can't let you help other people like, you know, or houseless people. Sorry. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's like if you're just government getting in the way. But that's but that's yeah. the whole point of crypto, right? Like the cypherpunk ideology. Exactly. Yeah, it's so you should separate money and for all that and just build your own system that mm-hmm. that knows what you want it to do and then let it compete. Yeah, decentralize it, and yeah. it's like you know. Oh, and I, one thing I did want to mention too is uh, the bot problem. Like from what I understand, mining mining Monero is not super profitable. Yeah. In my understanding is. The amount of bots mining Monero may make that be why it, that is. Like if there was, if, if we could snap our fingers and now there is no more botnet mining Monero, it's only private citizens who right. intentionally are wanting to mine Monero and earn, you know, the fees and the mining. Uh, it's more, it's more people under. competing for less. Yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, yeah. It's so. Yeah. I mean, I think if there would be a way to deal with the bot problem, I think that could be a huge help to Monero because then you could yeah. actually have people. Like, um, and, uh, oh, and then another thing. So if, you know, money is speech, I made some notes, but I, I didn't really reference them at all, but I, I think I touched on most of the points, but, uh, yeah. So awesome, man. Yeah. yeah you you, yeah, you, you a lot of, you show a lot of information to share. But... Yeah. Yeah. So can, can I show a few things? Can yes. I... Go ahead. Yeah. So, so my books, check out my books and, and you or anybody watching, uh, radical life extension by Michael 10 outlaw psychiatric slavery. By Michael Tan, um, uh, radical life, ex- yeah, radical life extension. Oh, extreme longevity. Excuse me. Extreme longevity by Michael Tan is about creating a social media revolution to help achieve longevity, escape velocity. And I have music. Most of my so my I used to drink more whiskey, and I'm not gonna like try and show my music from a few years ago. But my recent music, which is mostly instrumentals, is I think you know so on like Spotify or any music streaming services or even YouTube. Uh, Michael Ten Longevity Escape Velocity, Heaven Is Now, Only Truth. So yeah, just search those things. Michael Ten, um, Miracle Mindedness. Uh, oh, and I was—I mean, you know—I made a song about Bitcoin Cash Monero, like two separate songs. I'm not going to show those because I'm—I'm I'm honestly not super proud of those. I'm not going to take them down, but they exist. And uh, I feel, yeah, I feel but, like we didn't—we didn't talk enough about the different books that you you wrote. We should have gotten like a little. Oh, I mean, I'll, I'll give you a super, like, so radical life extension. Yeah, how, how the how three hours. Yeah, yeah, give uh, us the pieces. I mean, give us yeah. the of each. Yeah, radical life extension is just, like, here's basically why we should defeat aging and why it's theoretically possible. Extreme longevity is why we should defeat aging, but here is actually how we can try to grow a grassroots movement to sort of try and demand the change. Because there's, and then outlaw psychiatric slavery is why psychiatric coercion and non-consensual psychiatry are human rights abuses and should be outlawed. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I mean, I have some other books, but those are the only, they're very short books, by the way. And uh, they're, they're, you know, they're searchable to find them. Um, and then, uh, I got some other projects I'm working on. I got websites, defeataging.science, michael10.net, tenergimasubi.com. Uh, I used to own, uh, oh, I, oh, by the way, if you or anybody wants, I, I, I gave away, uh, Monero, I had Monero.homes as a domain. And I, I gifted that to somebody, but I have Monero.beauty, which actually may have just expired. But I mean, there's still, there's all these like top level domain names now that are available. And um, yeah, I had Bitcoin Cash dot solutions, but I, that expired. That was a pretty good domain name, Bitcoin Cash <laughs> solutions. But, and then I got other websites. Uh, oh, ACAM.fun, that, that book, of Course in Miracles with Jay Z quotes, ACAM.fun. And uh, yeah, you, so, you are very prolific, my friend. Yeah, I mean, I've been on YouTube for a little while. I mean, my, a lot of my videos are not very high quality, but I mean, maybe that's why I don't get a lot of views. So, <laughs> but I, I like to share good ideas. I, I like to think, you know, um, the people who see my videos, like it, it helps a few people here and there. So, I uh, they yeah. don't even say right. so. Yeah, I was reading some of the comments too that people are leaving that you have some hardcore followers. And like, oh, hey, yeah, I guess so. Some comments there. Yeah. So, All right. um, anyway, we, thanks for uh, talking. Uh, yeah, well, we'll leave it here. I, I, I enjoyed this. This is fantastic, man. Um, thanks for doing this. You're welcome to jump on Monerotopia anytime you want. We do that. We do a, like a live show Saturday at 11 a.m. Yeah. If you ever want to jump on, share some Monero or Bitcoin Cash ideas that you have, you're, you're more than welcome anytime. Thank you. All right. Maybe we'll see you, maybe we'll see you down in Argentina. Would you consider going to Buenos Aires for Monerotopia? I consider it. All right. Especially with the new president. Yeah, right? It could be good timing a year from now. Hopefully things will start to be on the upswing by then. Yeah, I'm an optimist. I hope I hope you're listening. Yeah, I hope the people watching this are optimists. Like, you know, there's... Sure. There's you, ha- you have to be an optimist to be, uh, you know, in, in, in these communities. Yeah, so cool. All right, Michael. Too much, man. Cheers. 
Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Odyssey, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Go to MoneroTalk.live to subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.